Hey, John. Who's the, uh... Oh, there it is. Whoa, look at this. I'm so excited. <laughs> I can edit that. Hi. We have Peter Capolino, founder of Mitchell and Ness. I'm Adam Berman, Princeton TV. We're down in Center City, Philadelphia. And um, I want to ask you first, we have the Cradle of Liberty, we have the Founding Fathers. You are the Founding Father of Throwback Jerseys. What is the genesis? How did you get into that? I actually got into it out of desperation. In 1983, uh, the company that my father had left me, I had driven into bankruptcy and I was desperate with what to do. And by 1984, I thought we were no longer going to be in business. I was at an old manufacturing company where we made jerseys and I found 12,000 yards or bolts of wool flannel. I decided at the time to try making some old vintage baseball jerseys because I had never seen them in the marketplace and I loved baseball and I loved my baseball heroes. So I started making Richie Ashburn, Roberto Clemente, started making all of my favorite players, even the older players such as Lou Gehrig and Joe DiMaggio uh, and Babe Ruth even as a Boston Red Sox. It caught on like I never expected it. It was something I never expected to happen and it exploded all over the country. So does that make you a genius though? That you know, geniuses do the simplest things that no one ever thought of or you just you said the alchemy just worked, the timing? I think it was an act of desperation. Uh, I no longer thought that I really had what it took to be in the sporting goods business because the bigger chains like Foot Locker and Herman's or Sports Authority, as you know today, came in and took over the sports world. And it was really a last straw. I don't know what I would have done if uh, I hadn't come up with that idea. Uh, it, it then it, it grew into something bigger than I could have ever have imagined. Uh, I did $252,000 a year in business in 1985, and I did $40 million worth of business in 2003. It sounds like a Hallmark Hall of Fame movie. I mean, the angels <laughs> came. You, you brought into a man named, uh, I've read these articles, Reuben Harley. How did he fit, fit into the alchemy, the chemistry of uh, the in, success? In 2001, um, actually Ray Ginelli, my store manager at the time, told me that Big Rube, or Reuben Harley, would like to represent Mitchell and Ness and do some marketing. And what happened was, the urban community fell in love with our jerseys, but they really didn't know how to get to me. But Reuben, Big Rube, knew how to get to the urban community and to celebrities. He then placed jerseys on some very famous people, such as Sean Combs, Jay-Z, and others, and that helped catapult the business to its success. Higher level. Um, now. Is it true, though, that when you, you finally decided you wanted to go over th overseas to manufacture, did that open the Pandora box of, of knockoffs? I mean... Yes. The, when, I, when the company got so big that I no longer could make the jerseys domestically, and I also needed to be able to sell them at a wholesale price to stores all over the country, I had to compete a little bit more with other apparel companies. When I went overseas, first to Korea, then to China, the counterfeiting actually grew bigger than my company. Wow. And you really can't stop that. No, there was no way of did stopping Did you try legal remedies or that? Just I tried legal remedies. Yeah. I probably spent about a half a million dollars a year. I had my own counterfeiting team at Mitchell & Ness. I worked with the FBI. It was just to no avail. And to this day, uh, Adidas now owns Mitchell & Ness. I sold, them, I sold Mitchell & Ness to Adidas in November of 2007. Mm -hmm. To this day, uh, they are unable to stop the flow of counterfeiting as big a company as they are. It's like the internet are stopping the wind. It's just going to keep going. It's just going to keep going. So really what you have to do oh, is keep ahead of the counterfeiters. And how do you authenticate then what you have? Is there companies that do that? Well, there are no companies right now that authenticate. Probably myself and a few of my old employees are the best authenticators in the country. And when we're asked, we volunteer our services all the time to help authenticate jerseys for people who are trying to buy the real good stuff on eBay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this wraps up uh, part one. Can I have another uh, part two interview about entrepreneurship? Sure, absolutely. Thank you very much.